Hello everyone, Vincent here from HTTV Test here. Further to my video yesterday, talking about the new NVIDIA RTX 3090, 3080, and 3070 graphics cards, it turns out that the company has confirmed that these Ampere GPUs will be using the full 48 gigabits per second of HDMI 2.1 bandwidth. I would like to thank my Twitter follower Michael for bringing this to my attention. What happened was that an NVIDIA personnel has posted on Reddit that the new NVIDIA Ampere architecture will be supporting the full 12 gigs at 4 lanes, giving us a total of 48 gigabits per second of HDMI 2.1 bandwidth with DSC or Display Stream Compression on top as well, which permits 8K at 60Hz, 10-bit HDR. So there are a few implications here, and also I think it will raise the debate of whether the 40 gigabits per second of HDMI 2.1 bandwidth on the LG CX or C10 and also the Samsung 2020 QLEDs will be sufficient, or do you really need the full 48 gigabits per second as implemented on last year's C9, E9, B9, and also the upcoming Sony XH90 when the firmware upgrade arrives and also the Vizio TVs. Right, let's step back a bit. So when I discussed the 48 gigabits per second versus 40 gigabits per second on the C10 with my colleague Adam Fairclough, we repeatedly stressed that 48 gigabits per second is only important for high-end PC users, 12-bit, 444, 4K at 120 hertz, and this is the case here. So you know, the Nvidia cards are not cheap. The RTX 3090 will probably retail for fifteen hundred dollars, fifteen hundred pounds, and those are not like easily attainable. So high-end PC users, we stick to what we said that you know this will only affect high-end PC users. So if you don't intend to jump into the RTX 30 bandwagon, you know, if you are only stuck with console gaming, if you are only watching movies, in fact, you know, you don't even need to worry about this. 40 gigabits per second is more than enough. Now, let's take one step back and talk about the Microsoft Xbox Series X. I think a few commenters and maybe even some other channels have attacked me, saying that, you know, I'm just speculating that Microsoft hasn't actually come out and announced that the Xbox Series X is not using 48 gigabits per second. Well, you know, here's the thing. If you look at the presentation slide that they actually put out at Hot Chips 2020, this is a symposium where microprocessor and integrated circuit manufacturers present their upcoming products. So if you look at the presentation slide there, they clearly stated that the Xbox Series X will be using 10 gigabits per second FRL, that's fixed rate link with DSC to permit 4K 120Hz and maybe even 8K 60Hz. Now, the thing is, there is no way 10 gigabits per second can convert to 48 gigabits per second in a round integer number. If the Xbox Series X was indeed using 48 gigabits per second, then Microsoft would have put 12 gigs FRL in the presentation slide. So it's just simple arithmetics, man. I think, you know, there are four kinds of people in the world. Those who are good with numbers and those who are not. So I think it is as conclusive proof as it can be that the Microsoft Xbox Series X will be using 40 gigabits per second of HDMI 2.1 bandwidth because of the number there, 10 gigabits per second FRL. Now, another misconception that I would like to actually clear up is that, you know, a few people have been commenting that these panels are 10-bit panels anyway. There is no need for a 12-bit signal to be sent into a 10-bit panel. Well, I think, you know, that is simplifying it a bit too much. I think a 12-bit input video signal can bring some benefit even on a 10-bit panel or even an 8-bit panel. So 
before the era of true 10-bit panel, you know, most of the panels out there are 8-bit or 8-bit plus FRC. And even then, you know, you see lots of 4K Blu-ray players or Blu-ray players sending out 12-bit data. And the reason is because I think you have to understand that, you know, the video processing chain is designed as such that the video processing is not actually done at 10-bit or, you know, just 8-bit. You know, they sometimes try to give more headroom for the video processing to take place, to take place smoothly. So let's say, you know, you send in a YCBCR signal, it will have to be converted to RGB. 1D LUT, 3D LUT will have to be applied and then it will have to be reconverted back with some color matrix transformation and stuff like that. All these conversions, you know, they need headroom for the bits to be converted correctly. If you don't have enough bits, then you start getting rounding errors. You start getting lots of, you know, video processing inaccuracies. And the analogy I like to use is this, because pubs have just started opening, I really miss my pint. So the analogy I would like to use is this. So let's say if you are at a pub and you were buying a round for your mates, so three pints and a Diet Coke for the guy who's supposed to drive. And you have really big hands, right? So you are bringing all these four glasses to the table. Now, if all these glasses are absolutely filled to the brim, right? And that is what I mean about 10-bit. You know, if you can just fit 10-bit on a 10-bit, you know, chain, then, you know, there will be spillage everywhere. It's carnage. It's absolute carnage. So there will be spillage, you know, there will be errors. But if you leave some headroom, you know, if you don't fill the glasses, to the top, then, you know, you can bring these four glasses safely to the table and everyone have a good time. So that's how I would like to explain why a 12-bit signal can actually benefit even on a 10-bit panel because, you know, I mean, just off the top of my head, you know, I think Sony has been trying to promote their 14-bit signal processing using their smooth gradation technology and even, let's say, Philips TV, they have been touting their 17-bit color processing. And it is because of this processing, you know, this headroom. The more headroom you give, you know, the better, the cleaner the signal that can pass through to the N 10-bit panel, you know, before the signal has to be deleted to be fitted onto a 10-bit panel. And by being able to accept a 12-bit signal instead of only 10-bit, you know, you are giving the best start, the cleanest possible signal for the video processing chain to work with. But again, I digress. I think, you know, a lot of things need to go right for a 12-bit signal to be clearly advantageous to a 10-bit signal. It depends on the video processing chain as well. And that's why my esteemed colleague, Stacy Spears of Spears and Mansell fame, you know, he has put out some really fantastic, excellent benchmark disk out there, not only currently for UHD HDR, but previously they are HD benchmark disk. And it is because it allows you to determine whether with your Blu-ray player, with your source player, with your display, with your signal processing chain, whether 10-bit or 12-bit signal will produce a better result. So that's the point of view of trying to clear up the misconception that, you know, 12-bit signal is not really needed for 10-bit. I think what you want to know is basically whether LG C10 owners need to worry or not. I think uh, I think if you're not a high-end PC user, if you're not planning to get into the RTX 30 series card game, then I, there's generally nothing to worry about. 40 gigabits per second is more than enough. And even if you are planning to get the RTX series, I think the key is that whether NVIDIA will allow the RTX 3090, 3080, and 3070 to output 10-bit 444 or full RGB at 4K at 120Hz over HDMI. And obviously, these LG OLEDs only have HDMI port, which is why the whole debate came about. And I think you know NVIDIA will see some sense in allowing 10-bit output. But I think, you know, another thing that, you know, is on my mind is that when NVIDIA launched their new cards, you know, they were demonstrating 8K on LG's Z10 or ZX OLED, and that is an 8K set, but that happens to have 
a 48 gigabits per second full HDMI 2.1 chipset as well. So that's another thing that plays on my mind. But you know, we'll just have to wait and see whether NVIDIA will allow for 10 bit output, full RGB, 4K 120Hz over HDMI. I hope, you know, this video is not too long or I'm not ranting too much. I just want to clear up a few misconceptions and bring you the news that the new NVIDIA Ampere graphics card will be using the full HDMI 2.1 bandwidth of 48 gigabits per second. If you found this video useful, please click the like button and subscribe to the HDTV Test YouTube channel for more videos like this. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.